I'm Lenka DeVore and welcome to Nottingham News. In tonight's headlines, in the last few moments, the People's Security Bill was passed by the King's Council, but not unanimously. The action in the pits heats up and black market mass food poisoning in the outer circle. But our main news tonight. In a resounding statement of strength and unity for the safety of all citizens in our fair state, the King's Council formally passes the People's Security Bill. Praising the work of the Council, King John proclaimed it would finally give our security forces the necessary iron fist and the velvet glove to keep our nation safe. And I, for one, breathe a sigh of relief that the Council did the right thing. But not everyone had our best interests at heart. Although Lord Barton and Lady Tuck both voted against the bill, the rest of the council saw sense and passed it in its entirety, thanks in no small part to a campaign by this news station and you, our viewers. Lady Tuck and Lord Barton had advocated for months for a toned-down version, worried that the bill would curtail the freedom of ordinary East Mercians, I'm sure Lord Barton and Lady Tuck had their reasons for trying to block this bill, but it is right that we now have rules in place to protect the law-abiding citizens of our great nation. This was a glorious day for our state. Terrorists like Will Scarlett only understand one thing, strength. And with this bill, we have the strength to see them off once and for all. In our other headlines tonight, there was anarchy in the pits today as the fight between Graham Albright, sentenced to three rounds for black marketeering, and Ben Marlowe, sentenced to four rounds for the attempted murder of a peace officer, turned into something of a damp squib when both men refused to engage despite the cajoling and jeering of the crowd. After a half-hour standoff in which fans became increasingly restless, Gladiators angry Adam Paulson and Georgie the Kid Kilminster stepped in and finished the job, dispatching both of them. Oh. Did they think that if they didn't fight, they'd just be taken back to their cells? Given a nice cup of tea and a biscuit, perhaps. <laughs> it doesn't work that way, fellas. If they'd only followed the rules, one of them would still be alive. Survive all your rounds, you'll earn your freedom. But cheat the system and... Oh, what a blatant lack of respect for the judicial process. But there are some people who do care about their community and country. Step forward the dedicated staff of King Richard Hospital, who, along with volunteers from the High Cut Salvation Programme, have been dealing with a mass poisoning in the outer circle. Multiple casualties have been reported after criminals stole a cache of pre-torrent preserved food from a Barton University archaeological dig. The criminals then sold the hundred-year food on the black market. So far, three people have died, ten are in intensive care, and 38 are being held overnight for observation. All survivors have been charged with undermining the state. And authorities from the eye remind everyone that buying goods on the black market is not just dangerous, it is illegal. And remember, reporting reaps rewards. Weather watch now, and despite the red weather warning remaining in place, we can at least report some good news. Thanks to the brave actions of yet more members of the High Cuff Salvation Programme, alongside local volunteer firefighters, the burial forest at Walters Green, previously under threat from raging wildfires, has been saved. A beacon of hope amidst the darkness and despair. However, authorities are warning that the wildfires are not yet under control and urge all citizens to remain vigilant. Anyone who wishes to volunteer as a firefighter or fire tower watch person should report to the local community muster station. And authorities have asked for all food and clothing donations for the families burned out of their homes should be taken to your local HSP office so their network can ensure the quick and efficient distribution of these items to those most in need. 
And now some news about Nottingham News. The station's editor-in-chief, David Devenick, is returning to the eye to head up the Criminal Evidence Database Archive. His replacement, Jane Cartwright, will be leaving her role as the eye's internal investigations commissioner to become our new editor-in-chief. We want to assure you that our station's reputation for fearless campaigning and ethical journalism will continue. In celebrity news, more on the story that keeps on giving. <laughs> Production at the Troubled Sisters of the Stone Shoot has been put on hold yet again after one of the three stars, Katie Horn, broke her foot when a stunt went wrong. She's now laid up in hospital and producers are scrambling to find other scenes to shoot while she recovers. In an interview this morning, co-star Hannah Brock proclaimed, Katie has always been a clumsy c***. Well, Hannah, <laughs> don't hold back on your opinions. <laughs> we'll keep you updated on this latest feud. And finally, while we're on the subject of stones, young Outer Circle resident Matthew Grange was on the receiving end of a stiff talking to from the guards yesterday after frightening other children in his neighbourhood. Mudlark Matthew found an interesting orange rock during his early morning scavenging, claimed the stone was a reckoning hold, and then convinced his terrified friends he had been possessed by a renegade hiker. <sighs> Perhaps a future on the stage beckons for young Matthew. <laughs> and that's all the news for now. Thank you for tuning in. For more stories and information, go to our website, which is on screen now, and in the link below. Until next time, goodbye. And may Hecate bless you. <laughs>